All right, let's get on with the tutorial. Let you stay there. All right, as promised, finally I got the thumbs up hand. See that? It's got tendons and everything. It's pretty cool, and it's got nails. They're falling off, and they're full of blood and pus. Got some nails there, except one's missing because it got ripped. Anyway, this is what we're making today. So the possibilities for this are endless. This is just a hand tutorial that is very uh, anatomically correct, meaning like the lengths of the knuckles, nails, the size and shape of the hand, right? The little pad on the thumb is very anatomically correct. So you would like add this to a prop on the hand, right? Or you could have this coming out of the ground, like a groundbreaker, something like this coming out of the ground. Or there's a hundred other things. This could sit on your desk if you finish the end. Just make it look like there's all kinds of like tendons and whatever hanging from it. The other thing I'm going to do with this is frame it. So I'm going to show it to you in a frame or with a handle. I'm not sure yet, but anyway, let's go back to the studio, which is right here. And let's get started with this. So, this is what we're going to need. Wire. You have a few choices here. You can do the thin wire like this uh, florist wire. You see that? Or thicker wire. This is not that thick, but, uh, but it's easy to, to bend, which is what's important. You don't want to have really stiff wire. I'm going to use this because it's more durable than this. On a hand like this, that stiff wire helps it stay in shape, as you can see. Right, so it's a little more durable. The next thing is, you see that, it's just a, Put my hand a piece of paper i traced it and then i kind of traced the path that the bones take because they're not necessarily straight and they don't necessarily meet at the same spot at the bottom they're kind of like spread out see so that's what i did and that's just so that the hand is a little bit more anatomically correct if i was going to make some zombie hands or some kind of witchy hands then you can make them more deformed but right now, I want it to look like it began as a human hand and then it kind of decomposed or became a zombie or something like that. Some pens, old pens that don't write anymore. This is my preferred pen because they're like the cheapest ones and they are an even width. They don't change shapes along the length of the pen. It's like a tube. I'm gonna need some fake nails, doesn't no matter what kind. There'll be links below, by the way, for everything that I'm using here. Some sort of clear plastic. I'm using saran wrap, stain, red paint. This is for the flesh. Fake blood that dries. This is glue blood. For the meat of the hand. Buffalo snow, which is the same as polyfill, which is what you put into pillows. And it's almost the same stuff that the fake uh, spider web is made, only that it's finer. But you can still use spider web or you can use buffalo snow, which is the fake snow. On the first step, we'll bend the wire. And we're going to start at the bottom of the hand and leave some extra wire. So just hold it there, and I'm just going to go all the way up the bone. to the fingertip. Okay, once you get to the fingertip, all I'm going to do is bend it right there. And just take your pliers to squeeze it. So that is the first finger, as you can see right there. Okay, now once we get to, we go back, don't go here to this knuckle, instead go all the way down to the wrist and turn it not so tight and then go up again on the next finger. And we do the same thing again and 
fold it where the fingertip goes. So as you can see we have two fingers, right? One there and one there. Well, let's do the same. Put this one, then this one, then come around and across and do the thumb. There that is that finger. Then we come down for the thumb and just make it a little wider. It gives it that space that most hands miss and that it looks like a chicken foot. And go all the way to the end and again fold it. Okay, so there's the thumb and bring it down and leave some extra extra wire. So right here I'm just going to cut this off. There's the beginnings of your hand. Now we need to like flatten it and give it this shape. So just work the wire until it has that general shape. Right. Now here where the wrist goes I'm just going to grab some tape and start taping these guys to hold them as one. I'm using some masking tape. And you don't need a whole lot. What we're going to do is get those little areas where they were supposed to be together. Put a little piece of tape there. That's one. Let's do those. See that? I'm just going to put a little piece of tape here. Then put the hand over it. What I'm trying to do is just get the spacing here between the knuckles correct. So once you get that spacing right, put your piece of tape there. Get the next one. Get that. Another little piece of tape here. Get this finger and this finger spaced. Once you do, just put your tape there. It starts taking more the shape of a hand. And here on the thumb part, let's go ahead and put a piece right across. That's this, this piece of skin right here. This is one of the parts that most people miss when making a hand is that the thumb goes way deep into here instead of having this skin right here. I'm just going to reinforce with tape on the same spot. Now that we have the basic hand shape, I'm going to reinforce the wrist. For that, I'm just taking a little piece of wire. It's about a foot, or maybe a little bit less, about 10 inches. Going to bend it in half like this and then we're going to tape it right there and that will give us a stronger wrist. For this next step we're going to take a sharpie and going to mark everywhere where you have a knuckle or where your fingers bend. So you can use your graphic if you marked where they were or you can just put your hand over the other hand as close as you can and notice where, where your finger bends. And where that bends you put a little mark right there on the wire. So let's do that all around. And it looks like the top knuckles are right there. Now we're going to take our pens and just disassemble it. Once you have the little tubes, just take the sharpie and measure the different, the distance between the two knuckles. So if you see, let me zoom in. Do you see the distance between that knuckle and that knuckle? And then we're going to take the pen, put it on top, there you go. We're going to cut 
a piece of pen that fits between the two knuckles with ample space. So between that knuckle and this knuckle, it'll be like right there. We're going to cut that piece off. Make sure you know which one belongs where. I'm using this jewelry saw, but I found a real cheap one and I put a link below. There you go. That's going to be our bones. So set that aside, but remember where each one goes because they are all different lengths. So I'm going to do one even for the tip of the finger. So you need one, two, three per finger. That's four fingers, 12, 13, 14. So for this pinky, that's the base one that goes from that between those two knuckles. This one is the next one. And as a hint for the fingertip, instead of cutting it straight across, cut it slanted, just like this. So that will go like this. And as you can see, it's slanted like a real finger. Finish cutting the pens and now I'm slipping each one of the sections where it goes. Just don't lose track of which one goes where because as you can see this middle finger has a very long bone whereas this pinky has a tiny little bone. So after you load them up we're going to start gluing them. So I'm going to go plug that hot glue gun. Now let's get started with this. Without losing track of your bones take them out in the order that they are and put them in a way that you won't lose them. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and number them. Thirteen and fourteen. So this is the part where you decide what your hand is going to do. In my case, it's going to be a thumbs up. It can be any shape you want, right? Depends what you're going to use it for. So here, since we marked where the knuckles are, we know exactly where stuff bends. So we can start giving it the general shape. So for a thumbs up, as you can see, there's an angle. It could be 90, it could be a little bit less degrees there, and then it closes in. The thumb goes straight up. And then from this point of view, the fingers come in and then back in. But I'm going to be using nails and making them all nice and creepy. So I'm going to have it a little bit open so you can kind of see the detail. So let's start bending this hand according to your own hand. Ninety degrees. So ninety degrees. And try to bend at the knuckle that you marked. Right? That looks crazy, so we can always reshape them as we need. Do not make any more bends without putting some of your knuckles in because then you won't be able to get them in. So we're going to use the base bones for these fingers. So for that, that'll be this one for the pinky. Number one, number four, and number 10, right? Because after we bend these fingers more, you won't be able to move these anymore. So I'll go ahead and at this point, you can give it some general shape. This can be bent more later, but see that? And grab your hot glue, put a nice piece of glue there, slide it on. Do that for every knuckle. It doesn't matter if you put a ton of glue because it will just add to the corpse. Next step, we do the same with the next set of knuckles and bend them at the white, at the black marks that you made. So for the thumbs up, this is going to go almost parallel to the hand. So, parallel to this. Pliers makes it easier to fold in a straight line. Nice, huh? And again, start uh, adjusting your fingers as you see necessary. Look at your hand, see where the fingers are going. Now we're going to go with the next set of knuckles, which is these guys right here. So that's number two. Number five, number eight, and I think this number 11, I believe. I hope, yes. There you go, and let's glue those in place. You can glue it on the inside or on the outside, it doesn't matter. And since it has a wire 
are mature you can always adjust the shape that you want. Even at the end, even this, I could adjust the shape without causing too much damage if you wanted to bend the finger a little further, see? No harm, no foul. Bend this part in. Do that too, see? Now it has a little pinky bend. That's taking shape real good. If you want, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up already. Or you can wait till the end and see how it turns out. Let's go ahead and put the, milk, the bones on the thumb. So that is just this one. And the fingertip. Here you have to be careful because the slant is on the front, right? So this slant needs to be on the front, not on the back. So it'll go like this and if you look at your finger if you give it a thumbs up the slant goes straight forward so this needs to go straight forward all right i'm gonna bend these guys in just a little bit not too much like a real thumbs up because you'll lose your fingertips in there just a little bit so you can see them those are bent in now let's just glue the fingertips there again the slant goes towards the towards your fingertip so this, this slant goes down. Perfect, huh? I'm just going to put up, this place start kind of soft. I'm just going to put a little drop of hot glue and hold it in place. We have the general shape now. I am going to take some uh, masking tape and just mask the rest of the hand part. Not the, don't worry about the fingers, just to give this a nice flat surface from which the, that the corpse can glue onto. By this point you should have your hand in the general shape that you want it. Now we're going to start corpsing. So here I'm going to put a ton of flesh on the top because as you can see it's very skinny. Look at that. Ton of flesh on the top, ton of flesh on the bottom and a tiny little bit on the fingers. The fingers are already pretty bulky with the pens that we added to it. So notice on your hand is where the fleshy parts are, like here, 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 right? The thumb has a ton of flesh. You have skin here. On the top you don't have that much flesh, so we're just going to put a thin layer just to make sure that there are like uh, tendons and flesh on it. Grab your buffalo snow or your polyfill and start pulling some out. And with this, just try to get it into strips that can be wrapped. That makes it easier. So you get a strip, just shape it with your hand. And to anchor it, the best way to do it is to put a tiny little bit of hot glue in the area where you want it and very carefully anchor it. I mean carefully because if you push too hard, that hot glue will go right through that and onto your finger. See that? Now, Pull it around and glue it in the back. A couple spots here. We're going to keep doing this until we cover the whole hand and it has a nice shape of like a really fluffy or chubby hand because we're going to shrink it. So don't worry if it's looking too big, we're going to shrink that. But it will shrink proportional to how much you add it. So if you add a lot here, that won't shrink that much. If you add a tiny little bit, it will almost disappear. Trying to get this part right here. That's a good use for the pens you destroyed. Just lay down the polyfill where you want it. And then grab the other end and glue it. For this thumb piece I'm putting a drop of glue on the bottom, putting a piece right there, then pulling it towards the thumb and then wrapping it around. The line of glue, put this piece there and fold it with this. And you have some nice fleshy 
thumb muscle. I'm going to put a little bit around the wrist, but it's just to hold all this tight and in place. So that is super fleshy. It looks like cotton candy, right? The next thing is to put just a little bit of uh, this polyfill around the knuckles where they're like really empty and that will give it a little bulk to the knuckle. See, just like that. See the knuckle? And all this will shrink. So I'm going to finish doing all the knuckles and then we go to the next step. I'm going to take the heat gun and shrink some of it to see how much we have left that still needs to be corpsed. You can do this in stages, that way you end up with like a big ball with no shape. Instead you shrink it and if you see you're missing some somewhere, you add a little bit of polyfill and you shrink it. So let's do that. Just be careful because the metal, these wires will get hot if you leave the gun too long on it. All I'm going to do is just very slowly start shrinking the, the polyfill onto the hand. So you can see it works almost immediately. Now the wrist tightened up. Also don't leave it too long on the hot glue because it will melt it right off. See this knuckle? Let's do this knuckle. Watch. See how it got tight? Let's do the thumb. Look at that thing. Looks like we need some meat on the bottom, huh? As you can see, it starts taking the shape of the hand. But you have to add some places and take off on some others. But since you built the hand correctly with the right uh, anatomical shape and proportions, as it shrinks, it will shrink into that shape. So what do we need? Looks like knuckles and obviously this thing down here on the thumb because that looks like not good. Now for the thumb, I'm just going to put this right here, then bring it down and maybe cross it over like that. Put it down here. Shrink this. It's better, huh? Once you shrink it a lot, it starts getting like really stringy, which is pretty cool. What do you think? It's taking shape. Now I'm going to paint it with red exterior latex. Where is it? You can spray paint it too, but I ran out of my spray paint, so I'm going to use this red bloody uh, exterior latex. All we need to do is paint the top surface. You don't need the paint to go under. That is all painted red. Just plain old exterior latex. This is just a sample from the... I think it's from Lowe's and it only costs like three dollars for that whole thing and I'll make like tons of hands or even like a whole body. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry. This is nice and dry now. It only took a couple hours. It took a little bit longer than I thought uh, because some of the latex paint kind of like got absorbed into the, the polyfill but a couple hours went to eat dinner. Now it's nice and dry. So let's get to the next step. I was thinking of doing an extra touch here and do some of the some of these tendons or ligaments that make your fingers move. So Q-tips are going to glue them on the back of this. So this one goes between this knuckle and like this bones right here on the inside. Like there. See that? I'm just going to add a little bit of paint just to blend them in a little bit. I'm just putting a ton of paint at the ends so it doesn't look where they join 
and then kind of like faded away. This is going to be covered by the corpsing anyway, so it's no big deal, it doesn't have to be perfectly painted. Now if that's too bright we can put a little bit of stain or just give it a, a very light coat of paint just to not make it so bright white. Next step, let's get some saran wrap. Now, what I was trying to do is get me one of those food service gloves, the one you use when you're making a sandwich at Subway, for example, because that would be perfect. You put the glove on and you don't have to worry about uh, making the individual fingers. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to find one, so we're using this. So we're going to have to wrap the hand and then the thumb individually and then each finger individually. I found that the best way to attach this is to put just a little dot of glue in some corner, then another corner, and another corner. And this glue won't be visible later. Just going to lay this on top and gently push it because you don't want to burn yourself. Now I'll hold it in place so you can put it as tight as you want around the hand. Now in this case, because the fingers are bent and it's kind of a pain, we're going to go around the underside. Now for the thumb, I'm just going to cut a hole right here so the thumb can be wrapped on its own like that. So now take this piece, drop of glue right here, pull it over, let's get more and just keep wrapping just like we just like we wrapped the knuckles and the fingers individually with the polyfill, we're going to do the same with little strips of this shrink wrap. See that the pinky is, there's a space there which is good, that way the finger is all by itself. Now let's do this finger, this finger, this finger. Since we are using some nails, you want to have some wrap on some of the fingertips. This one is not going to have a whole lot of wrap, so we might choose to not have a fingernail there. Now the thumb, I'm going to want it to have a fingernail, so I'm going to put a little extra piece of wrap there. Now the next fun step for this thing is grab that uh, heat gun again and let's shrink this. Start with the back. See it starts tightening right away. So this hand is pretty shrink wrapped right now. So go ahead and make a few holes on it uh, so that you can see some of the flesh underneath. So I'm going to cut just a little cut right here then one here between the these knuckles. Maybe you can make one of them visible just like that and just hit it gently with the heat gun again. See how it opens? That hole right there. So there's the hand, it has a nice little shape to it. Now for these final steps, we're just going to stain everywhere that you have that saran wrap. I'm using regular wood stain, the one that I've used with a lot of my projects, which is this uh, Rust-Oleum wood stain, it's a cognac color and use a brush that you can throw away and you should perhaps use some gloves because this stuff is nasty. Okay, so just take a little stain and just paint it all over. See that? And it's hopping over the holes that you made. You can put some stain in the holes if you want because you won't be able to rub that off and it will give it a little darker shape. See this little webbing here? Look at that. Now, grab a couple paper towels, one in each hand, and start wiping that stain off. Just like that. That's starting to look pretty nasty there, huh? All right, let's start working on the details. So, nail time. See all those nails? Just pick a few that fit 
your your hand so for this thumb I want something medium maybe like that big right I'm going to take these corners off and on this on the thumb on the thumb I want it to be like lifted like it's about to fall off so it looks triple nasty see that nail and we'll make it look na nastier in a second now let's put nails on these fingers good size all right so let's cut this a little drop of glue there and put your nail right where you want it so I'm going to put nails on this one and this one a drop of glue and the nail there has been split and to finish this nail since they kind of jump out a lot it's just got we have some stain put the stain on them for now just stain them real good just like that do the same here 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 and here see the nails there's the thumbnail that is lifted. Right, next. Let's grab a brush. A little bit of paint, maybe some uh, yellow ochre. A little bit of white. Some black. I'm trying to make some kind of like a gray dusty color with these. So a little bit of white, a little bit of black, not a lot. More white. A bit of this yellow. I'm going to dry the brush all the way and we're just going to hit a few of these wrinkles right here. And the idea is that it looks like it's kind of rotten so if you take there that edge like that it's time to get a little gray color. And that's all I'm gonna do all around. Hit the drier the brush the better. You hit the nails, hit them like this instead of uh, brushing around them. See the wrinkles on the thumb? See that pinky finger with the nail? That yellow gives it a really rotten color. I get a little bit more here, although here's a hole I'm going to hit the edge of the skin. Now we take the fake blood you can use the glue blood or fake blood. Just start adding to different areas where you need it. One of the areas that I wanted was here inside of this nail that fell out. And this will make this lacerations jump out. Now after that dry brushing and putting the nails on and some of the fake blood, what I did is I added these two pieces of a pen. I just cut a pen in half and slid in and that's just to have a handle, right? Or if you're attaching it to a prop or something like that. So that's the only extra thing that I did. That nail looks painful to me. I like the gashes. I'm not sure if you can see it there on that lighting, but there's blood all inside of those gashes. This dude needs a manicure for sure. So that's pretty much how you make a hand. This is my second try. This was my first one which turned out pretty cool. I like the shape of this one. But on this one we added the details with the nails, the blood, the dry brushing, you know, even the little tendons on the back. So finally, if you think this was an awesome tutorial, give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna have this with me all the time now. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to share this with somebody. Halloween is coming, forward this uh, video to them. I bet you they'll appreciate you for it.